Good acting. Watch closely. She's already there. You can't. Uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, go for it. It's all right, man. I can handle this situation. You see, Bar. Good morning, folks. How are you doing? And welcome to Getting Closer. I'm your host, Lawrence Siraj Fowler. And today we have a true king of show business. I know myself I'm looking like royalty from coming out of America or something, but I'm just trying to dress for the occasion. Our guest today is a multi-talented actor and director of television and theater, whose acting career ranges from the love boat to family matters to in the heat of the night to that's my mama, and whose directing career ranges from directing several episodes of the love boat to the Wayans Brothers, to Moesha, to In the House. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to welcome Ted Lange to Getting Closer. My pleasure. So, I mean, most of the audience, most of the TV watchers, they know you as actor and director Ted Lange. Myself, I know you as uh, Cousin Teddy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my cousin, Ted Lange. Uh, Don't the guy that <laughs> against me, Lawrence. <laughs> the guy who tells all the funny stories at the family reunions. I would ask you when your acting career started, but I've already looked at my mother and father's yearbook and uh, saw that you were in the drama club at uh, Oakland Technical High School. Yeah. Bay Area is in the house. Thank you. Okay. Right on. So I just want to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Um, I know you mostly myself in terms of your acting, but you've also made that transition into directing. So when did your passion for directing start to emerge? When did you realize that you had a passion for directing? When I couldn't get an acting job. What happened is I was doing a show here in Los Angeles. Uh, well, I wasn't doing a show. I was running around trying to get into a show, and they, uh, I wanted to audition for a show called The Iron Hand of Nat Turner, which was uh, about the legacy of Nat Turner. They lost their director. The director was Yafet Koto. Mm. I couldn't get in the play because the play had already been cast, and I heard about it late. Mm. But I made friends with the uh, secretary to the artistic director, mm. and she, she knew that I wanted to direct and that I lied and told her that I had directed up in the Bay Area. Mm. So she told these guys, she says, hey, I got a really good director for you. So uh, since I couldn't be in the play, I ended up directing the play. And it was because Yafet Koda got some kind of movie. He wanted to be a movie star and I just wanted a job. Hey. You can't be mad at that. All no. of us just want a job. No, I tease yeah. him every time I see him. I said, you're responsible for my directing career. Hey. Can't be mad at that. No. Especially when indi one individual passes up an opportunity, then it's the next time an individual's turn to make a name for themselves. Yeah. So I'm not mad at that at all. But, I mean, you've been acting and directing from, I mean, today since, you know, the 70s and 80s television. And so from your perspective, I'd like to know um, how has television changed from today's, you know, programming from maybe some of the more feel-good shows of the 1980s. How do you feel it's changed, and is that a good or bad thing? Well, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing because it really depends on ratings and mm. what people want to watch. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing now is television is evolving to the point where reality is coming into mm. uh, mainstream television right. because it's cheaper to produce. And the Internet is now emerging as a new source of storytelling. So what's fascinating to me now is how these two things are going to be combined. Right now we're having a, a kind of a deal going on with the Screen Actors Guild mm. and the producers because revenue can be made on the Internet by that kind of programming. It's also being done cheaply, too, uh, I think even cheaper than some of the reality stuff. But I, I see it as a wave of the future. You find more young people watching the internet than they are watching television mm -hmm. or going to the theater. Right. So what's going to happen, I think, eventually is you're going to see internet programming supersede television. And I'm just, it's going to be curious to see how television evolves and how it stays current with what people want to watch. Mm. Now in terms of maybe some of the content 
you know, in terms of what you might be able to watch in terms of family television. Do you think there's more of that available today than there was in the 80s or maybe less of that? No, I think that now you have a broader spectrum and mm -hmm. what's happening is because of the broader spectrum, it, it gets departmentalized. Mm -hmm. So you have cable shows that cater to women like Lifetime, you have cooking shows that are on uh, the Food Network. So what's happening is television itself is breaking down to where they are, they're going for a specific audience. BET mainly does black programming. Right. Whereas before, uh, when I was coming up, you'd have black programming on network television. So now it's, the, the broadness of that is going away and is emerging on uh, the internet. So it's a fascinating dilemma. I think the main thing that the audience wants is good storytelling. And if you have the ability to tell a story really well, I think that you'll you know, find a place to work and ply your craft. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> now, I mean, myself being an 80s baby, you know, your name was a household name, you know, for most of them, my peers, you know, and most of the youth that... That's because I gave them money, but that's another story. Go ahead. <laughs> Not even mad, though, but I'm saying in terms of, you know, your acting career, most individuals are uh, familiar with your work in acting, but I'd like to take a look at a clip of some of your directing work. So we'll do that. We'll take a look at some of your uh, directing reels. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. How old are you again, Brianna? Never ask a woman her age. <laughs> How old are you, Mr. Marion? Older than Usher, younger than Denzel. I can never stay mad at you. <laughs> I am adorable. <laughs> Honest Jago, my desdemona must I leave to thee. Well, uh, I mean, we see that you have an illustrious directing career. And so based on that, in terms of your acting as opposed to directing, um, how does the content of a show affect whether you're going to direct it or not? Well, I, I kind of look for a visceral feeling. If I have an affinity for the material, that's what I like to do. Or also if I'm broke. If I don't have any money, then I don't care what the pace is I'm directing. No, I'm just serious. Uh, no, it depends. I mean, in television, you know, uh, for instance, Moesha, it helps if you like the show, if you like watching the show. That's a, a, a big uh, plus. Uh, some shows you go, I did, did Dahmer and Greg, and, uh, you know, you got to find what you like about mm -hmm. the show in order to give it your full commitment. Give it your all. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what you have a tendency to do, most directors in television are hired guns. Mm -hmm. So they're not, a, they don't come from the beginning of the show. They come in after everything is in place mm -hmm. and then what they try to do is as efficiently as possible keep the show running. Uh, get the episode done on time, make sure that the actors are looking good in their parts and that there's no false moves. Mm -hmm. So Ted, thank you for joining us today. You know, thank you for sharing your insights with us, my generation, past generations, and future generations. Okay. You know, thank you for coming. And, and also, you're going you to take me to lunch? Hey, you might just have to do that. I mean, he, we're family, oh, by the way, anyway. Oh, he so. owes me a lunch. He's been owing me a lunch for seven years, but that's another story. <laughs> you know, plenty of lunch money that he's given me in the past. Okay. But we'd also like to thank Ted Lange for joining us today, and we'd like to thank you for joining us here on Getting Closer. Thank you. This has been Siraj Fowler. Thank you for joining us. Well, we call him Little Larry, but that's another story, folks.